One of the things we have learned over 40 years is that here in New England, everyone has their own unique talents and tastes. Kind of like ice cream, Anthony. We all have a favorite flavor. At Chronicle, we've tasted a lot of ice cream over the years and paid tribute to our own sacred cow. Are you ready for this? Uh-huh. There's no escaping it. New Englanders are obsessed with ice cream. And for decades, we've been chronicling that icy love affair. That is addictive. <laughs> we've covered hundreds of ice cream makers from Brigham's founded in 1914 to the arrival of Oddfellows in 2019. But every ice cream story has to start somewhere. That's right, cows. We'll have a glass of milk here in about uh, 20 minutes. From our earliest days, cows have been Chronicle's unofficial mascot. They've appeared on the landscape of countless Main Streets and Back Road shows. So we couldn't help but get a little attached. Now, where can an ice cream loving, cow clad Chronicle correspondent find a kindred spirit? I want your coat. I want your coat. Hi. <laughs> Jamaica Plains iconic ice cream franchise, JP Licks, where we sit down with founder and cow lover, Vincent Petrick, whose business is also celebrating 40 years, despite some early doubters. The first article we got actually predicted our demise yeah. uh, because our flavors were not subtle at all. They went off in your mouth like bomb bursts. And I was like so touched by that because that's exactly what I'm trying to create is I want you to be able to be blindfolded and still tell what you're eating. Like JP Licks, Chronicle also had its share of early doubters. One review calling us a mishmash as appetizing as a mayonnaise sandwich on white bread. But back to ice cream. Chronicle's history with JP Licks began 20 years ago when then anchor Mary Richardson dropped in for a visit. Coming up with the name JP Licks was tougher than it seems. Actually, it was our second choice, Mary. The first choice was virgin cream, but being a relative newcomer to Boston, I was told that I'd be picketed, probably stoned, by the good Irish Catholic uh, majority here in Boston. Who would misinterpret what you were doing. Exactly. I was the only one with a straight face that could say, virgin, pure, wholesome. <laughs> and everyone else, of course, saw another uh, definition of the word. In 2005, our paths crossed again. In a Chronicle show about eBay, we scoured the office for an example of something to sell. How about we try to sell this? The Chronicle cow lamp. I wanted that lamp because it was the most adorable thing I'd seen and it functioned. Were you aware of the controversy? Yes, I heard, I heard you guys were off in arms. Patrick won the cow lamp with a bid of $96. But behind the scenes, some Chronicle staffers were outraged. How could we sell such a sacred piece of Chronicle history? And thus began a movement to get it back. I got a phone call from a producer at Chronicle explaining to me a story about the cow lamp and how I think it was a mistake that was put up for auction. The solution? Make another lamp. That, it turns out, was easier said than done. These beloved bovines, made in mass, were only sold in bulk, cheaper by the dozen, which explains the herd still in residence today. I was so touched and impressed by the trouble you all went to to get me a replacement cow lamp, you know, which to you wouldn't have been authentic, but to me it was fine. And I noticed that your lamp has some signatures on it as well. Oh yes, I have uh, Peter Mohegan's and Mary Richardson's autographs. They were my heroes back then. Now, time for a new signature and a new flavor. It seems that there are two of like Boston institutions that are coming together to celebrate their 40th anniversary. You guys and us. Congratulations on your 40th. We're gonna make a special Chronicle edition flavor. Ooh. How about Chronicle Cow? So the yes, so you may have struck upon the flavor. House brewed coffee ice cream with cookies. And I'm gonna go ahead and stuff three pounds of cookies into this Chronicle Cow. Look at that. This is a completed batch of the Chronicle Cow. Mary would be proud. 
My personal favorite is a coffee Oreo. Made right here in Jamaica Plain. You're welcome. Enjoy. Chronicle Cow is actually the second ice cream named after the show. On our 25th anniversary in 2007, Brigham's created a Chronicle Coffee Crunch. Always nice to see our name well preserved in the freezer section. Meanwhile, preserved in our archives, a parade of people who, if not for Chronicle, might never have made their moment in the spotlight. Ted Reinstein explains. For 40 years, Chronicle has introduced you to some of the unique individuals who call New England home. The unusual, the quirky, the wild, the eccentric, or as we call them around here, Clint's characters. Who's Clint? Our senior producer, Clint Conley, who has a knack for seeking out true originals. He'd be here now, but he's out answering the call of the wild. Calling all characters. Shame, shame. Those not afraid to carve out their own niche. So what? I'm doing it wrong. Why, you got a problem? And willing to chart their own brave path through this workaday world, like Howard Davis and his mobile phone. The reactions are great because people, when they see it driving down the street, recognize the object as being a telephone. I love it. And then the double take is, my goodness, it's driving. Chronicle has actually gotten a lot of mileage over the years from unusual vehicles. Jonathan Sherman is always good to go. His motorized cooler, both a stylish means of conveyance and beverage container. Then there was Desiree Davis of Newport, Maine, busted, as it were, for tooling her Toro around the yard with the top down, her top. I've got an email from this website from a lot of women who said, you know what, I mow my lawn topless too. Peter Mahegan found stimulation of a different sort as ever on the road. Head over to the East Boston side of the Sumner Tunnel and let Coffee Man work his stuff on you. They're beeping for the Coffee Man, they know he's here. Oh, here comes the dog, he's looking for coffee. Look at that white dog in that truck. He wants the coffee, I can tell, he's ready. Chris Costonis is Coffee Man. Let's just stretch for some cream here, we got it. At a buck a cup, business is in the black. But make no mistake, Coffee Man you got it. takes his lumps out there too, especially from truck mirrors. They hit the tank, they spin around. You gotta go with the flow, I carry 60 pounds in the back. It's almost like a competition out here. Competitions are good for revealing character. All right, mount up. We found that out at the North American Wife Carrying Championship at Sunday River in Maine. You know, the strategy really is just to shut down the frontal part of your brain, right? Just get into caveman mode. <laughs> Then there are the vegetable Magellans we found floating out on Long Pond in Rutland, Massachusetts, truly out of their gourds. This is the second annual Massachusetts pumpkin paddle. And if that doesn't float your boat, Mary Richardson learned from New Hampshire farmer Steve Seegers that pumpkins also make for excellent ordnance. Fire in the hole! He built a gigantic medieval war machine started lobbing heavy vegetables at a fake castle. Chronicle's explorations into the spiritual realm have also yielded otherworldly results, like our visit to Lilydale, a summer colony of mystics and mediums in upstate New York. People think we're evil. They think we have human sacrifices. They think we are in league with the devil because we talk to dead people. And Andrea Hall got schooled at the annual convention of the American Society of Dowsers in Danville, Vermont. Is Let me know when I get the to the edge dome. of the water dome. At the edge of the water dome. Now some might wonder which end of this chain has the bigger nut, but there's no room for skeptics in Danville this week. She's female on, look at that screen. Resistance is futile. Wow. And if there's a lesson to be learned in Danville during Dowser Week, perhaps it is this. Spare the rod. Okay, show me yes. And spoil the fun. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> 
most inspiring of all, the self-admitted oddballs who have declared their independence from the day-to-day -day world and created their own realities. Wally Warren, who reigns over a kingdom of color deep in the Maine woods. These plugs are going, oh, oh, great one, oh. The anonymous fellow in the forest west of Route 128, who's worked on his primitive multi-room huts over the last 20 years. And lastly, I discovered a portal into another world right here in Somerville. Oh, hello, come on into our world. This place is a single piece of art, and you can just walk inside art itself and feel the energy from everywhere. Like a big whale swallows you, and you're just inside wandering around. Every last square inch of it, down to the bathroom sink, a rejection of the drab, ordinary world outside its doors. They think it all oh, life is awful. Doesn't matter what's happened, awful. I'm awful, everything is awful. No, we manifest, no, life is beautiful. Make it as beautiful. Only on Chronicle. <laughs> that is for sure. Up next, an alumni yearbook and a visit with Peter Mahegan.